everyone. Welcome to my channel. My name is Lisa Alistway. And on this channel, you will find a variety of inspirational and informational videos. So if that sounds good to you and you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. My guest today is Vanessa Chamberlain, who is a pro aging personality and the author of the best selling book called The Fire Driven Life. She passionately teaches and speaks about embracing aging and everything that comes with it. I will be linking her webpage and Instagram in the description box for your reference. Welcome, Vanessa. Hi, it's so nice to be here. I'm so excited about our conversation today because this is what lights me up. Yep, me too. Um, lots and lots of things to talk about. Um, so let's just start off kind of at the very beginning in the bio, I mentioned that you are a pro aging personality. Can you tell me why you decided to kind of let that be your main focus with what you do? Uh, well, it's been a journey because I can tell you that wasn't, I mean, obviously I've always been pro looking my best, but I can, I can tell you that the aging part was something that I had to come to grips with, which is all part of my journey. But I think there's something to be said when you become a certain age, I'm 52 years young. And once you get to that point where age becomes an issue, then you start renegotiating everything you thought about that you knew about beauty and about aging and, and all of that. And I, I realized amidst my own uh, journey of letting go of the gray hair, which we'll discuss today, that there was definitely not there, there was no conversation. It was very little conversation about it. It was, you know, kind of like the, you know, you get to a certain age and you're just kind of insignificant or you're washed up or you're, you know, the, the brands don't even talk about you anymore. They want to use, you know, 21 year old, you know, 16 year olds in the, um, in their advertisements. And, and I realized, wait a minute, and not to knock my grandmother, I adore my grandmother, but this generation, even more so than ever, is not our grandmother's gener generation. And we are living better than ever. We are aging amazingly well, especially because we have so many incredible tools and lifestyle changes, all the things that are at our fingertips. So I wanted to be on the forefront of that movement for myself first, because I'm in that. And I thought, I don't want to be for the next 50 years, you know, that put in a corner. But that, and so if I didn't want that, I needed to be that change. And I wanted to be the light. That's kind of always been my mission about being the light um, you know, for others so that we could, I could pave the way for the next generation. Most definitely. I'm also in your generation, Generation X. And I know there is no particular manual you know, with all the things that go on with this age, uh, middle age, with perimenopause, menopause, and you know, looking yeah. at our parents' generation. Like for example, my mom is a baby boomer. Uh, in 75, still colors her hair, different generation. <laughs> I'm seeing more in this generation embracing their gray hair and your gray hair is striking. It's Thank beautiful. You. And Thank the fact you. that you have embraced it, um, I think is amazing because like I said, previous generations, they're like, give me that box dye. I'm going to like color it all the way to the grave. So let's talk a little bit um, for you in that journey of deciding to stop dying and uh, embrace your gray hair. Okay, well, I was, as you were talking about your mom and the previous generations, that was me. Mm. That was me until the moment it wasn't. That's how radical shift it happens. My entire life has been, I have derived my self-worth on outside circumstances, mm. you know, young enough, pretty enough, um, the right shoes, the right friends, the right husband, the right, all of those things. And so for me, gray hair had a very big stigma of, you know, old, unlovable, unattractive, washed up, insignificant, um, you name it, drab. And so that was something I never wanted to be. In fact, with my, um, with my late husband, I used to say to him, we're going to have money set aside so that even when I'm too old to color my hair myself, it will be colored. Like I thought until my last breath, I would have dye on my hair because I had so much shame around it. I had, you know, that bought into that story, um, society's beauty story. And so therefore, and also not only that, but I had always been, so here I am, you know, how my appearance was attached to my, you know, my to my worth is that also I was a singer. I had a jazz band. I did a lot of speaking events 
And, um, you know, so my parents, on top of all of that, was also really, really uh, an important thing, you know, that, to me that I attached. So for me to make this decision to ditch the die is something I really never thought I would do. So do you want to hear how it happened? Yes, I do. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hmm. So 2000, September 26, 2019 was the last time that I dyed my hair. Not knowing, I, I had, I thought I'm dying my hair and you know, I'll dye it the next time. I was going to, I had just started growing out a, a pixie haircut. So I'd had a pixie haircut for over a decade, very short, cute little pixie. My hairdresser was like, Vanessa, you, you know, it's, it's time. Let's grow your hair out. We need to do something different. I said, okay. So I was growing that out about five months prior to ditching the dye. I go off to Germany and my daughter, my, my older daughter and grandkids live in Germany. So I go off to Germany in September for a month to stay with them. And I'm having this conversation with my daughter, who is at the time 30 years old, or just about 30. And I said, you know, she's like, mom, what are you going to do with your hair? And I said, you know, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how long I'm going to grow it, but I'm, you know, I'm ready. I said, but gosh, I've just got to do something about these roots. I can't stand it. And I said, it's getting, you know, I'm coloring my hair darker and darker, and it's looking more like shoe polish. I mean, I don't like it. And I had tried a blonde stint for six, six weeks, about a year prior to, which I never thought I would do either. And it destroyed my hair. So she's like, well, she goes, Fabian, which is her husband, he goes, he can't wait until I go gray. He thinks it's so sexy. It's so beautiful. Okay. And, you know, and they're in their thirties, right? Or he's, he's 32 or 33. And I thought, you know, she's very much more relaxed about it. She's beautiful, but she's living in Germany and has a whole different mentality about, and I'm thinking, oh, well, that's great. But, uh, you know, not for me. Fast forward, I come back from that trip and it's time for me to get my trim for you know, my grow out. And I text my hairdresser and I say, you know, it's, he said, don't call me before two months. You've got to let it grow. I said, you know, on Tuesday, it'll be two months. I'm coming in for my trim. He said, okay. And I said, and if I can just figure out what to do with these damn grays. And he didn't say anything. And like an out-of-body experience, something just took over me and said, or, and I'll be a lady and just say, F it. I can just let it go gray. Like, who said this? And <laughs> immediately said, type back, add a girl. And then I immediately put down my phone, popped open my laptop, and I started Googling. I started Googling beautiful women with gray hair, models with gray hair, young women with gray hair, older women that are beautiful with gray hair, everything I could think of that was the story in my head. And you know what I found, Lisa? What? Beautiful women started popping up that I had never mm. seen before. Mm. It gives me chills because I'd never seen this many amazing, beautiful women just by Googling this. Like, where were they hiding? Mm -hmm. Within five minutes, and literally it was that fast because I was just popping up. I picked the phone back up, text my hairdresser and said, Brandon, it's done. I'm going gray. Mm. I felt more peace than I have felt in a lifetime. Mm. Go ahead. And I knew, I knew when I said that, and I was going to do this, it was going to be something so much bigger than hair color. Mm -hmm. In my gut of every cell in my body says, Vanessa, this is going to be life-changing. This is going to be something you probably should document and write a book about. Like mm -hmm. This is going to be redefining how you view aging. Mm -hmm. It'll be everything. I, I just, I had that, I, the knowing. Mm -hmm. but I was ready. I was so ready. Although I don't know where it came from in the sense of, because this was such a fearful thing to do. You know, we had so much shame around showing our gray roots, you know, think within three days you go, you, you plan your trips around, you know, your, your events, all of this around the gray roots. And suddenly I was going to, you know, go on this journey. So mm -hmm. Lisa, I decided, okay, since I'm going to do this, like I said, I'm going to, I'm going to make this epic for myself and a, a learning experience. Mm -hmm. I decided I was not going to, you know, there, there's no wrong way to go gray. Some mm -hmm. people highlight, some people cut it all off, slow grow, you know, you can, there's no wrong way. Mm -hmm. But for me, having, having had the bleach blonde experience that ruined my hair, you know, a couple of years ago, I knew that wasn't going to be the, the choice to go gray. But I also knew even more so is that 
that process of the length of time it would take to grow it out would be the journey. Mm -hmm. I knew that was going to be where the good stuff really, the secret sauce was. Mm -hmm. And then I said, I'm going to start up, I'm going to start a social media. I'm going to open up an Instagram account and I'm going to document and show every single day those grays that I was so shameful to do. I'm going to take those pictures, which that did terrify me a little bit because I always had like the perfect pictures. Mm -hmm. So here I'm going to be showing these like not attractive shots. I thought long and hard. I'm like, I have to have the perfect name. I have to have the perfect name. It's got to be all of it. That's the whole perfection recovery. Mm -hmm. thing. And I came up with silver liberation. Mm -hmm. Name is really important. So one, I chose silver because to me, silver, and this is, you know, in the beginning stages of under, you know, of me stepping in to me, silver was sexier. Mm -hmm. Silver was prettier than just to say the word gray. Now I love I could, you know, but in the beginning, it was all like, how can I make this beautiful, mm -hmm. you know, and sexy, vivacious, all the things that I still wanted to be. How can I make that? So silver, um, you know, for, for the gray has that pop and liberation to liberate yourself from what no longer serves you. And I wanted that to not just get stuck in the idea that and again, how I knew this, but I did, that it was going to end up being much more than the hair. I think it's really great that uh, women are embracing their silver hair. And it's interesting that yours happened before the pandemic in 2019. Yes, I, I like to say I was gray hair cool before COVID made it cool. Mm -hmm. So yes, I embraced it prior to that. And what I found, obviously, on once, once I joined uh, the Instagram is, that there was this small but mighty group of silver sisters, mm -hmm. you know, in the silver sisterhood, which was, you know, again, I had never seen that before. And, um, and I kind of plugged into that community immediately, you know, tagging them and, you know, and it's funny because within, I mean, it was so amazing how fast that I started getting messages, private messages from women saying, you're inspiring me. Oh my God, me too. Or I'm scared. Um, I'd like to do this, but, and my account just blew up. Mm -hmm. It seemed like it wasn't over. It was overnight. Although I was posting every single day and I pour my heart and soul on, you know, every one of my posts, like there is really a story that goes along with rarely will you see something that's just like, here's the picture day one, not to knock that, but um, there, I, I was trying to teach and grow through my own experience and to, and to uplift anyone that might even be considering this, you know, to kind of share it, you know, show them this is what I'm feeling. And this is what, you know, you too can experience if you, if you get this right. Mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. you know, and that there's amazing silver sisterhood that just, it made the journey so flipping amazing. In fact, there are two things. Well, there's three things that are the best thing about going gray. Mm -hmm. Aside from one, I'm in love with this color. <laughs> but bigger than that is first of you know, the, the self-acceptance. The more I have more peace, I am more in love with who I see in the mirror than I've ever been in my entire life. You know, and that happened within about six weeks. Um, you know, I remember looking in the mirror one day and I said, Nessa, you are going to love yourself like you've never been loved before. you know, that was just the way I talked to myself just can change, you know, change. And instead of having the disdain, I used to look at the, my roots and just with pure mm -hmm. disdain and hate. Mm -hmm. Now I look at it and I would talk to it. I'd say, I love you. You're mm -hmm. beautiful. Mm -hmm. Can't wait to see you full grown, you silver crown. You, you know, I would say these, I get choked up. It sounds so silly, but it's a big thing. Yeah. Big thing. Yeah. You know? And then the third, which is equally as important is the silver sisterhood community that you are invited in there is no fee no you know initiation just a willingness to support and uplift others that group of women is unbelievable i have so many women so many cultivated friendships all over the world i've met many of them I actually tomorrow i'm having lunch with one that's coming in from out of state met one you know that came in from australia that doesn't happen i mean i don't know of many especially women mm -hmm. groups that are that supportive with minus the caddy backstabbing things that oftentimes happen in, in women's, in the women world. Mm. And it's just, it's not, 
It's just not the case mm-hmm. with the Silver Sisterhood. And it's just, it's beautiful. I feel so privileged to be, to be a part of it. I like to say I'm like the, you know, one of the cheerleaders or like the captain of the Silver Sisters. I joke about that, but, but it's that important to me because I've, I've never felt like I belonged more than anything than I do mm-hmm. with this, this group mm-hmm. of women. That's so cool. Um, so let's talk about some more pros of why somebody would want to go gray or silver. Um, what would, are some of the benefits or advantages of it? Oh yeah, there's plenty. Uh, <laughs> let's see, one is cost. So I, you know, I, my cost wasn't that bad because I had very dark hair and a single process isn't terrible um, except for my, gr- my grays would show up every three or four days. And most women will tell you that first it started out like, it was like eight weeks. I started about 17 years old, by the way. And it just, you know, mm. got more and more. In fact, my youngest daughter came home the other day, said the hairdresser told her she's got three or four and she's, you know, she loves my gray hair, but she's like, I'm not ready yet. I said, well, it's partly hereditary. At any rate, it went from eight weeks, then six weeks, then five, then four, then three. Then it got down to like, I would go about twice a month to the hairdressers and I would use, you know, the Clairol um, box, you know, touch up root touch. I would do that in between. And then it got to be, that was twice a week. And then I'd use the powder stuff. And then, then it got to where my grays were like, I don't want to be covered up. I will not be covered up. So the cost is yep. huge. It's yep. a huge saving um, time. We don't have to, you know, again, you're not scheduling yourself around your hair. Mm-hmm. And that is a huge topic that we talk about all the time. It's like, oh my gosh. And packing your, packing those touch up, you know, boxes on your mm-hmm. trips you know, in the hotel bathrooms or whatever, calling it, it's not, it's so silly, but that was a, that was a huge thing. Um, let's see health. I didn't realize here's something that this just, this will show you how much society standards and shame had a hold of me and vanity. I had some health issues a few years back when I was going through menopause and I went through to, to my functional medicine doctor and he ran lots of tests. And one of them was all the different toxic load tests that show the different heavy metals and things in your body. And I was having memory issues. There's a whole lot going on. And we get the, we get all these reports back and we get this, we're, we're looking over the toxin report, the toxin report. And at one point he says, oh, he named something. He says, do you color your hair? Mm-hmm. And I said, yes, I do. And he says, well, you know, this love, these levels are off the chart for, and it was something within the black dye. Mm-hmm. And I said, Okay, and I'm biohacking, babe. Like I do all everything nutrition. I take, you know, I am like all on it. And I wanted this to, this all to go away. I wanted to heal myself. I said, I will do anything I need to do, but I won't stop dyeing my hair. Hmm. There was so much hold on that, and I had forgotten about that. But I, and I did. I did. I did on the FODMAP diet. I did everything, but I wouldn't. That was just it was such a hold on me. Mm-hmm. Fast forward about two years later, or maybe even almost three years later, when I had ditched the dye, about six months into ditching the dye, I had completely forgotten about that, that whole situation. And it went off and I just broke down in tears and thought like that, that just shows you, even at the detriment of my health, I was saying no. And I would tell anyone else if they were smoking cigarettes, or whatever, I'd be that health coach. would be like, what are you doing? Are you crazy? Mm-hmm. So it's such a complicated issue for women. I mean, I don't see a lot of men having these conversations or letting it like rule their life with their time, their money, their energy. Um, And so, you know, no judgment on women that want to continue, you know, dyeing their hair. If that works for you, I think, uh, you know, the message that you're sending is for those that are like questioning it and want to look at it. Um, these are some really good reasons for doing it, including your overall health. Exactly. So like I said, it wasn't for health. That's not why I did it, but it should have been, especially again, considering that I'm in the whole health and wellness world, but that is a huge factor. Um, you know, when you're looking at, you know, if that's something in your wheelhouse that that you're Mm -hmm. considering and you're right, I think, I think the option to be able to color your hair is fabulous. It's Mm -hmm. awesome. I'm I'm a huge proponent. I want to get this out there that I'm a huge proponent to be able to use any and every tool and um, lifestyle or product or procedure right. if it makes you feel happy. Like that is no judgment. Like you do you, we've got to stop mm-hmm. the judging. And it's interesting that you mentioned that you don't really hear men, talk, men talking about this. Well, I was listening to a woman um, the other day and she was saying that 
it's the women can you, you know, it's like the, it's not the, we want to always blame. I think we kind of want to blame like, oh, it's the men. They want the younger, they want the younger and that it's there. No, it's us women. And, and when she said it, it made complete sense. We are the one, it's almost like competing against one another, you know, for that, you know, to look a certain way, to be a certain way. And it, it's really a story. And like I said, I'm not going to say that men don't have any play in that, but I, I think it's really more of a woman to woman issue. Mm -hmm. of um you know of this because you know what i find lisa is there are these groups of women you've got the women that are letting everything naturally go by choice and you know this is how i want to age mm -hmm. which is beautiful and then you have you know the opposite spectrum of someone says i'm going to take advantage of every up you know every procedure and tool and tip if and they trip. can afford it <laughs> if they can afford it, yes and i'm going to do this and then you got the people yeah that are kind of in between but what i'm seeing on um what I, what I don't love seeing on social media is the purist or anyone doing it but the purist saying you know like shaming the person that is deciding to do any you know do any kind of, right. of uh, enhancement and then you've got the women that are you know super enhanced some that will then bash the oh my god take care of yourself you know and just bash the ones that don't mm -hmm. so i think there there's a lot of work we women need to do Mm -hmm. in this space of lifting one another up and not being, you know, I think it comes from jealousy. I absolutely think it comes to jealousy. I know if I've ever thought something or felt something, I'm not one to start being catty, but in my heart, have I felt things? Of course I have. And I, and I've taken a lot of time to dissect, Vanessa, why are you feeling that way? Like, what is that? And it's jealousy. It comes down to oftentimes when people spew, especially women, when they're, you know, spewing negative things, especially about appearance. Mm -hmm. It's their own stuff. Mm -hmm. So when you say jealousy, you mean their own insecurities yes. that are yep. coming up? Yep, I do. I, I I really do believe that. Maybe it's not truth, but for me, from what from the being in this space now several years, um, that's the conclusion. It's the only thing I can think as to why. Um, you know, that's also why I am a huge proponent that my experience and many other silver sisters experiences has been this that when you let go of the die you know let go of whatever no longer serves you you find peace you find this kind of inner peace during the process mm -hmm. and i am convinced that when we are at peace with ourselves and even if you're not in the, like you could be not in the in the hair dye space at all you're just you've done something you go on your self-healing journey and lisa finds peace in whatever in her life and you feel at peace you are 99.9% .9 less likely to ever judge anyone else. Mm -hmm. I believe when you can find your own peace mm -hmm. and then you let, it's like, let people be you know, who they are because you feel good with yourself. When you don't feel good inside about whatever it is, it's really easy to start lashing out mm -hmm. um, at other, at other women. It's that jealousy because they don't have peace themselves. Yes. Yeah. So that's really interesting. Um, so let's talk about kind of the flip side too, with gray hair and maybe some of the, I don't know, cons of it. Yeah. Yes. One other thing I wanted to add in, in the, in the plus column. Oh yes. Yeah. Cause there's one other thing was, um, or is everyone says you'll look old with gray hair. That was the other thing you look old. Let me just tell you, I, it lights up the face. I was so mm -hmm. shocked. It is like this glowing halo effect mm -hmm. and I pretty much see it on just about every silver sister I've seen, we, when you look at the before, mm -hmm. especially the women that have had dark hair mm -hmm. and they transition to light, it is a youthful, vibrant, mm -hmm. you know, if you want to talk about like having your own kind of filter, mm -hmm. you know, just walk around filter, it's with the gray hair. There's something just radiant about it. You know, I want to add to that too, because a lot of women complain middle age that they don't feel seen anymore by society. Um, and yeah, how do you not see a beautiful head of silver hair? I mean, it is to be seen. Exactly. And oh, I got one more on the plus side too, is yeah. that I did this single. I've been, I, I, you know, I, I've been, my husband passed away and then you know, I've been single for um, at least five years. And I was afraid. That was one thing I thought, oh my God, I'm single. Will I even find someone, you know, with the gray hair? I can tell you, although I haven't found my one, I'm looking for my, my love, I'll put that out in the universe. <laughs> what I can tell you is, and what my silver sisters will also tell you, and what we know because there is a slew of men that follow us on Instagram that love 
the gray hair. So if any women out there that are concerned about that is actually, it's your, as you mentioned, it's beautiful, but you know what it is more than anything? When you feel at peace and you feel mm -hmm. confident in yourself, mm -hmm. you could have any color hair mm -hmm. and be attractive. But I think it's that process. You let it go. You're feeling more at peace. And then it's like a double whammy of like, woo, when you mm -hmm. see a silver sister. Mm -hmm. Cause it's that inside out that it's radiates. The inside out. It's mm -hmm. yes. And I, I actually did a post the other day. It says, you know, there's nothing more. I think I said, there's nothing sexier than a woman that is confident within herself to allow her gray hair to show. Mm -hmm. There isn't, it's mm -hmm. just, it is. Mm -hmm. and it's not about a physical beauty. It's about an inner confidence. That is what sexy is. Mm -hmm. That's what's ageless mm -hmm. beauty to yes. me. Yes, yes, yeah. I agree. Um, okay, so let's talk about some of the cons with going gray. Okay, uh, let's see, cons, this, this, we'll start with the slow grow out. For some, it can be really, you know, an uncomfortable experience the length of time, depending on how long you grow your hair. That would be the first one is people being like, you know, if you're in a, you know, if you're in a corporate setting or if you're in, you know, depending on the kind of job you have, although I think it's, you know, becoming better and better since, you know, because of COVID, but that can be a pain point. Often people, you, you'll hear this all the time. Well, I want to, but my son's wedding's in mm -hmm. six months or, mm -hmm. you know, this is, they're looking at all these dates. And if you, you know, if you do the dates and you try to, mm -hmm. it'll never work, right? That'll never work. So I would say that length of time, if you're doing the slow grow, the, you know, the other, if you do do, and some of my silver sisters have had success with, you know, adding some highlights and blending that can be costly. And sometimes it doesn't turn out so great. Um, you know, so there's that mm -hmm. there's the, um, for me, the biggest downside, although now it's finally turned around a bit was my hair. Well, two things, dry, dry, dry. Mm -hmm. Now maybe that's partly going through menopause, just getting but, older, your hair changes, yes. but I can tell you for sure. I used to, especially I mean, when you have a pixie cut, you wash it every day. Cause it's just the, you know, grease goes pretty quick to the, to the tips. So I used to wash every day with my gray hair. I could go like a 10, 11 days. I usually don't. And I like to go a couple of times a week, but a week later, it's still dry as anything. So some people may see that as a, a bonus. I wish that it wasn't necessarily as dry and frizzy. I had dealt with, like I said, it's finally, I think I found some product. I have gone through so many products. That would be, some women have their gray hair because they're so different. You know, the textures are, they run the gamut. It is all over the board. And so the frizzy was definitely something that I was battling that I, I was like, oh, I can't stand this, but I love my gray hair more, you know? So it'd be like, even though, and I would tell women this even, and I've been vocal about it. Like, okay, you know, this, I'd be like, oh, this damn frizzy hair. And I'll make funny videos on it. Some days it's like all over the place. And so that would be, you know, that's something. And also that when you're curling, you know, you, you know how you should always wear, use your hot products, your heat products very low. And I've had more than one silver sister that have one went in for a hair treatment and they put her under a, and she had beautiful gray hair and it all got ruined. All, all, all got roasted off till she had to do a little pixie, which the pixie looks really cute, but it was devastating. Um, and then another, another girl, actually an influencer that I had followed early on that had colored her, that had let her hair grow. Thought, oh, she's so beautiful. She, and then one day I saw her without the, you know, that she saw color, like, what happened? She had gone to a wedding or something and they had curled her hair. And then the next day, completely fried her hair. It is very, very, it's much more sensitive there, mm -hmm. you know, not having the pigment in your hair color. So from that standpoint, you have to be, there's a whole host of new things that come along with the, the tender, loving care. Um, mm -hmm. it, can, it can get yellow. You can get mm -hmm. the yellowing more easily. I can get kind of even makeup in there. And so you have to use a purple shampoo, which can dry your hair. So you have that, that issue. And then you always want to make sure you wear a hat and also sunscreen on your hair because that, again, without having the pigment in the hair, it does make it more sensitive. Now, I live in the desert. I live in Las Vegas and it's been A-OK, -okay. but mm -hmm. I just think it's a caveat. If I were hanging out all the time in the sun um, mm -hmm. or in the, you know, swimming and things that you just have to do a little, it's porous. Mm, so a little bit more maintenance as far as you have to take care of that gray hair because it can yes. get ruined with the 
heating products like a flat iron and so forth. Um, so you can you use those, and I do, you can use it, but you want to do, you want it on your lowest setting lowest. and you want to, um, you know, fast. I mean, that's from kind of my, it's, you do it and fast. So it's not to say you can't do it, but I kind of think the general rule when we have conversations in our community about it is that, you know, some women will do it occasionally, but they don't do it, you know, maybe it's a few times a month. Mm -hmm. But I'm learning more and more to embrace, this is the other thing that you either love or you don't. And I actually love it. I didn't love it. Now I love it. And that is that gray hair, many women suddenly become curly. Like where the heck did this come from? So much curl. Mm -hmm. And if you let it air dry, like I let, I washed last night and let it air dry, that it's much happier, you know, again, than if you're blowing and, you know, doing too much to it. So it actually does better for the most part when mm -hmm. you just you know, less is more, mm -hmm. which goes right with what we're talking about with, you know, not ditching the dye and all that different stuff. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So I, so there, I mean, there's, there's cons there. There's not, like I said, I, I'm still pro. Here's what I say. I say to women that are on the fence, mm -hmm. that, oh, I really want to do this, but I just can't. Mm -hmm. um, or I would, if I, if I look like you and I'm like, you could have, you, you would have a beautiful silver crown. I absolutely, you know, everyone thinks that, but cause you're just judging by two inches. Right, of you right. see, you don't understand. I said, but here's the thing when your heart, you know, when your mind's ready and your heart's ready and you step into this and you mm -hmm. do so at the best of your ability with a joyful heart, you can go through the process. And at the end, what's the worst thing that can happen? Mm -hmm. You diet back. Exactly. It. And you've had that experience. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think that in the very beginning, Lisa, I was hearing, you know, I'm in a lot of Facebook groups with, um, with the Silver Sisterhood. And I really, and it's funny because I heard more of it there than I did on Instagram or TikTok, is that there were, this was, you know, in the very beginning, 2019, 2021 beginning, that there were so many women, I mean, it was a lot that were starting the process and they had very unsupportive husbands and they would talk about it in these forums and it would break my heart to hear because obviously when you're you, you want you want to have someone that can support you which is why more than ever you know to those women out there that may maybe feel that way or don't have a partner or someone not supportive or their family members because a lot of them like the the women some are supportive and oftentimes it's your family that are the worst mm -hmm. about it so that's why more than ever having that silver sisterhood to lean on mm -hmm. as your as your strength and support mm -hmm. during the process is so key Yes, because that is a con. You can feel very stigmatized. Yes. Um, you could be held back because you're trying to please your partner or your husband because they have their own opinion about it. Um, and it's preventing you from doing what you want to do with your own body. And so those are all things that people have to wrestle with and come to terms with personally on their journey. Exactly. And there's something else that I wanted to touch on. And that is oftentimes either prior to ditching the dye or after you'll hear, you know, again, I look so old. Like I've heard in, in, especially, you know, I hear this more, honestly, I don't hear it in the younger women that have gone gray, but I would say the women that are even at least my age or more often older than me that are letting it go, that are in some of these private groups, they say, Oh, I, you know, I, I feel so old now. I look, and that is because they've stuck, they've gotten stuck in, like they haven't changed their hairstyle just because, you know, again, we can do whatever we want, whatever makes you feel good and feel beautiful. But there's a misconception that when we let go of the hair dye, that means we're letting go. Like letting go, like, Ooh, I'm taking off my shirt. I'm like, not gonna wear makeup. I'm not gonna do any of those things. And if that's what you choose to do, that's great. But that is not what I'm talking about. Letting go of what no longer serves you does not mean that you don't show up and take care of yourself and be presentable. And, you know, a new haircut goes a long way. A new lipstick you know, maybe changing your wardrobe a little bit. Those things are massively important. So oftentimes when you hear that from someone, it's because, you know, your bad hair cuts, a, you know, a bad, bad hairstyle is a bad hairstyle, mm -hmm. period. And if you can oftentimes get a, you know, find someone that can give you a great cut, it changes everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and plus I think we need to think about, um, cause aging is normal and gray, silver hair, gray hair, work, is normal and we need to normalize it rather than yes. people trying to, I don't know, deny, suppress, like inevitably what's happening with our bodies and 
I would like to see it more normalized in our society. It is. I agree. And I feel like the tipping point. I absolutely, yeah. I'm an optimist, optimist, but I absolutely see the tipping point of that. It's this generation that's it it. It's, it's, to me, it's exciting. It's kind of like the burn your bras. Like I'm not a, I'm not like a, you know, that that's, I'm not that necessarily that kind of girl, you know, I'm an old fashioned in so many ways, but I can tell you, this feels so good. Um, I think because I'm so connected, to, you know, to the, you know, to, to me having the shame and the, all of that with it, it, I feel like I'm, by me freeing myself, I'm helping others free themselves from, you know, from the same, from the same society standards. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like I said, I, I have, there's women that are in their early twenties mm -hmm. that are embracing it. And they're so cute. Like they're adorable. Mm -hmm. you know, it's, just, it's beautiful. And people are like, now, and think about it. People have been in the last couple of years, it's been a trend. They have been paying a fortune, yes, a fortune to get great. And you know, the best part is no one can get my color. No one can get, <laughs> you can get clothes, but we, it's so unique when yes. you, you know, your natural gray each has its own like colorways and a lot more pepper in the back, you know, mm -hmm. and, and salt in the front and it's unique and it's beautiful. And that's the beauty of, of, uh, I think of, of the gray hair and it's not, like I said, you can be young. It does not indicate old. Mm -hmm. The only reason people think it really is an old thing is because most people, once they get to a certain age, then they stop coloring the hair. And so there's that, I believe that's that stigma there, but you're right. In reality, there's people that, you know, you know, very, very, very young that have it. Yes. Yes. Most definitely. I think it's, it's just women of middle age that are just kind of faced with it more than, but I love seeing the younger women that that are already embracing their gray in their thirties. Cause it's happening. It does happen at a young age. You said it started in your, um, 15 you or 17, 17 yep. years. So I don't think we should be equating it with aging anyway, since it happens at, at any stage in life. I know. And you know, there's a, there's also kind of this push and not, you know, in, in the health and wellness world, um, even that I'm a part of that say, Oh, you know, you only have gray hair because you know, you've got dietary deficiencies and all of that. And I, you know, yes, there, there are some deficiencies and things that happen for sure, but I also know hereditary, you know, oh, hereditary yes. plays a huge role in it. Like I said, I have, I have taken every supplement, I have tried, taken every kind of pill in the past <laughs> and potion and concoction and bought every, you know, false claim to try to reverse it. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, um, you know, again, I think the more you can just embrace it, the more at peace you will be. And you'll have time to focus on other things. Like I said, just the fact that I wake up every day and it's like, Woo, I don't have to do, and that's the upside of the dry part is that I can go so long without washing my hair. It's fast to get ready. And mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. I, I think that the, uh, the benefits definitely outweigh the barriers. Once you get to a certain age and you stop like fighting it and you just like let go, but in the positive sense of letting go, just because we have to let go of all throughout life. This is just another example of letting go of something. Exactly. And so you know, most women at the first, they say, what's the hardest? I would say the, you know, maybe the first six weeks, the first eight weeks, mm -hmm. I made the choice from the very first time I went out that I was not going to wear a hat or do any kind of cover up. That's just me. I knew I had to get comfortable with it um, in order so I could just do it at peace, not to knock that, you know, cause you can wear hats and do temporary cover ups and things if that helps you through. Mm -hmm. But I would say, um, you know, the sooner you can get comfortable with it, the better. But after you really, after the first six months, I would say, then women are, cause you've got enough grown out that you're like, you're starting to really see like, Ooh, I kind of like, and you can pull your hair back and kind of get an idea. So I think if women can just kind of stick it out to that point, then, um, then you're going to really start to see that snowball effect. And I also would highly recommend any, any of your viewers that are watching this, you know, if you're on the fence or you decide to take the plunge, take pictures, take video. I promise you it will help with the journey and you'll think, oh, it's not growing, it's not growing. And you'll look back. And it really is this, it's a beautiful thing to see. I've never taken more selfies in my life. I was not a selfie girl prior to this and now I'm a selfie queen. <laughs> um, you just, it, it's, so, it's so beautiful to watch that progress. It's like, to me, it's akin to, you know, the kind of the a butterfly in the cocoon and it's, you know, metamorphosing. That's really, that's, it's, that's very much a good description for this process of letting mm -hmm. the gray grow. Most definitely. Well, we're getting here toward the end. Uh, would you have any like to share any final thoughts just on the whole pro aging movement or, you know, final words on going gray? 
ladies, I think the, the, the sooner that you, you know, again, take a deep breath. <laughs> get your heart right, get your mind right. The process of aging will change drastically for the good in your favor. If you can settle in, sorry, Mabel. He seconds that. <laughs> if, you can, if you can settle in to the process, there is so much peace and joy in the journey. And this letting go of the hair dye is an opportunity to open the door for personal growth in every single other area of your life. That's why I'm such a proponent of it. So you can get there in many different ways, but it is a beautiful way to open that door um, to self-discovery, to self-love, to self-worth. It feels amazing. I wish I could just give it to all of you to experience because I swear if you wore if you wore this feeling for you know for one minute, you would be like, I'm in. Yes. Well, thank you for being the example. That's exactly I, what our society needs is more people like you and actually using your voice to share, you know, why, you know, it's not a bad thing. It's okay. Embrace all of yourself and accept all of yourself as you go down the path of life. If I can do it, the girl who, you know, who had so much self-worth attached to everything and looks, you can do it. Very cool. Very cool. Well, thank you, Vanessa. I sure do appreciate so you coming welcome. on my channel today. Oh, it's been a pleasure. I'm so, so delighted with the conversation. Yes. So. Well, pleasure is mine. Thank you. And if you guys yeah. like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to leave a comment down below. And also don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to be alerted to when the next video drops. Thanks for watching.